Hey you guys, what's up? It's Nicole here from Bake to Jour, and today's video is going to be focusing on two different things. Number one, we're going to showcase how to macronage with a hand mixer. So we're going to be putting in the dries into our meringue using the beaters of a hand mixer. And number two, we're going to focus on flavor. So we're going to be using Amoretti flavors and I'm going to showcase how to put those into your ganache and buttercreams just to up your flavor of your macarons. So let's get started on a fun summery flavor today. We're gonna do lychee raspberry macarons today. So let's get into it. Started, I just wanted to showcase the products we'll be using. This is the Amoretti lychee or lychee, however you pronounce it, and this is the raspberry. They're both artisan flavors, and they're just a really easy way for you to incorporate different flavors into your macarons without too much work, and they're shelf stable, which is great because then they're a okay for those cottage food businesses. So these are the products we'll be using later on. Let's get into how to make our macarons. As you can see here, we have two different colors. So we're not only going to be mixing in those dries with the hand mixer, but we're also gonna be super careful and be able to split our batter and use it for two different colors with this method. So buckle up, let's get into how exactly we can do this. With macarons, we always want to have all of our ingredients prepped before we start that meringue. So once you separate your egg whites, you can set those aside and sift your almond flour and confectioner sugar. Here I'm using a different brand than usual. I'm trying out the Amoretti almond flour. Once you've sifted your dry ingredients, you can whisk those to combine and set those aside. Have a piping bag prepped with a piping tip that you are comfortable piping with. I use a nine millimeter tip, which is about equivalent to a Wilton 12. And last but not least, make sure you have your baking pan prepared with a silicone mat, Teflon, or parchment, whichever you prefer. Here I'm using the no rest method. So I'm preheating my oven right away at 300 Fahrenheit. Once you have all your ingredients and equipment prepped, you're ready to start. In today's batch, I'm using a hand mixer. Once my egg whites get nice and foamy, I'm gonna start sprinkling in my sugar in one to two additions, and just whip that on first speed or low speed until your sugar has dissolved. Once your sugar is dissolved, you can turn up to medium speed and whip until stiff peaks. When using a hand mixer, I like to make sure that I'm constantly moving my bowl and my hand mixer around so it's getting everywhere in my bowl evenly and not just right in the center of the bowl. If you wanted to do one color for this batch, you could color the meringue anytime after you reach soft peaks. Here I'm gonna split my batter into two, so I'm gonna wait until I have my dries incorporated to do my color. Once you've reached a stiff peak, this is where you wanna be super careful because we're gonna add our dries in with our hand mixer. Now the whisk of the hand mixer is hard to control because there's only a few settings. So you're gonna wanna go on the lowest speed possible. I only have a three speed, so I'm on first speed. And I'm gonna put my dries in two additions. Once I add my first addition of my dries, I put my hand mixer on low speed and just whisk it in carefully for about five seconds. And then I'm gonna add my second addition. Once I put all my dries into my meringue, I'm gonna just whip up again on lowest speed possible until combined, about seven to 10 seconds tops. Now I still want to add a color into this, so I'm gonna separate my batter here. Carefully topple my batter as I add Red Rose Master Elite color from the Sugar Art 
If you're in need of a great colorant for your macarons, I do suggest the Sugar Art Master Elites as shown here in this video. They keep their pigment when baking. You only have to use a little bit and they don't add moisture into your batter. So it's a win-win here and you can use Bake Du Jour at checkout for a 15% off discount. So I don't wanna over mix at this point and the beaters do a really good job deflating quickly, right? So you wanna be extra careful that you're not deflating too much and just get that color incorporated and then at the end, you can see if you need to deflate purposefully a little bit more. Once I got my color incorporated pretty well, I start deflating my batter to the right consistency. It goes really fast with that beater. Personally, I prefer a KitchenAid with a paddle attachment, but I wanted to showcase that it can be done with the beater of a hand mixer. Once I have my red rose color fully incorporated and the batter is at the right consistency, I'm going to set that aside for a second and mix my other half of the batter and I'm going to just leave it white. Once the other half of my batter is completely mixed in, I'm just going to put half my batter in my piping bag on one side and the other half on the other side. So it's gonna be a swirl effect, but it's not gonna be perfect swirl where it keeps them separated as if you put them in two different piping bags. So it's just gonna kind of mix organically in the piping bag and look really pretty as you pipe it out. Once you have your batter dispersed in your piping bag, a little bit of white, a little bit of the red rose. I did a very light red rose color because I wanted it to be like that pinkish color from the outside of the lychee. Again, my piping bag is fitted with a nine millimeter tip and I'm just gonna pipe out my circles onto my silicone mat. So here I'm just piping at a 90 degree angle. I aim for that little dot that's in the center of my circles and I keep my tip steady and just apply even pressure till I reach the template edge. I stop applying pressure and then a little counterclockwise flick of the wrist to release the batter so it doesn't follow along with me to the next circle. And I'll do that over and over until all my batter is piped out. And again, I use the no rest method here. So I'm gonna pipe these out, tap my tray, and then put these in the oven. As these are baking, this is a perfect time to make our fillings. For the first filling, I already had Swiss meringue buttercream and you can check out my top five favorite macaron fillings video to see this recipe. I'm gonna take 100 grams of that Swiss meringue buttercream and then mix my raspberry artisan flavor from Amoretti into that as directed on the packaging. So for food purposes, we're gonna add three to 5% of our total weight. So I have 100 grams of buttercream. So I'm going to use three to five grams of the raspberry flavoring. Once the raspberry buttercream was all mixed together, I'm gonna put that in a piping bag and set it aside until I'm ready to fill my macarons. Then let's move on to our lychee flavor, which is gonna be a white chocolate lychee ganache. This recipe is very similar to the gingerbread white chocolate ganache recipe I shared last December. And if you have my Fillings ebook, it's very similar to that chai tea white chocolate ganache. So we're gonna have 65 grams of heavy whipping cream. Place that into a pot and heat it to a simmer. You're also gonna need 100 grams of good white chocolate. For a white chocolate ganache, you're gonna want to use a really nice quality white chocolate so that your white chocolate ganache sets up. So here I'm using Calibo W2 white chocolate. Once my cream is at a simmer, I pour that over my white chocolate and just let it sit for one to two minutes to let it start melting. Once it's melted a little bit, you can start emulsifying from the center with a spatula and just sort of do small little circles with your spatula. And as you see it coming together in the middle, you can move out a little bit further and just keep taking in more and more of what's not emulsified on the outsides and pulling it into the center 
and it's a really cool effect to watch. And once you have a shiny, homogenous ganache, you let that sit for a little bit. Then you wanna take 30 grams of unsalted butter and I'm going to put in my lychee flavoring here. I'm gonna be using three to four percent of my total weight of my ganache here. So I used about seven grams of lychee in my ganache. So I'm mixing seven grams of that flavoring into my butter and then I'm going to temper my butter mixture into my ganache. How you do that is pour a little bit of that white chocolate ganache into your butter mixture. Slowly emulsify that just as you had done in your bowl before. Once that looks homogenous, you can add a little bit more and you're gonna put about a third of your mixture into that butter and emulsify it. Once that looks nice and emulsified, add that butter back into your main ganache and emulsify that once more until you get a nice silky smooth white chocolate ganache. You're gonna wanna put saran wrap directly on the surface of this and let it sit for a few hours out at room temperature or in the fridge to set up for about 30 minutes to an hour. Once it's set up enough to pipe, I like to pipe it before it completely sets in the fridge. So in that half an hour or hour time span is a perfect time to pipe your white chocolate ganache. Once your macarons come out of the oven and they're completely cooled, you're gonna wanna pair them up, find their little mate, and then set them up so you can fill them. So here I'm piping a ring of that lychee white chocolate ganache on all my shells, and then I'm going to pipe the raspberry buttercream in the center. This pairing is so good. You could also do it the other way around and do a raspberry white chocolate ganache and the lychee buttercream up to you, but the raspberry and the lychee pair really well together. Once they're all filled, you're gonna sandwich these together in a little twisting motion to bring that white chocolate ganache out to the edge and then put those in the fridge to set up and store in an airtight container until they are matured. These will take 24 to 48 hours to fully mature and then enjoy. Aren't they beautiful? I just love the look of a white chocolate ganache. It's so shiny. The flavor is so bright, a little floral. It's amazing how you don't even have to flavor your shell to get so much flavor infused after the maturation process. So make sure you mature these and then enjoy. These are so good. I'm really excited to share these easy ways to get more flavor into your buttercreams and ganaches. If you're looking to purchase something from Amoretti for a one-time purchase only, you can use Bake Toujours without the R15. I'll put it down below at checkout for a 15% off discount, one-time purchase. <sighs> That's it guys, we did a lot today. We made our lychee raspberry filling and mixed with a hand mixer and they still came out beautifully. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and like this video down below. It helps me immensely. I hope you enjoyed these recipes and make them in your own home to share with your loved ones. Have a wonderful rest of your week and happy baking.